The Bet HaLevi wrote a magnificent essay on the concepts of Bitachon. And I think that touching upon that essay would do as great good as an introduction to Shar Bitachon. Because at the end of the day, I know personally of people who their lives were literally in one place before they learned Shara B'Tachon and then their lives went totally to a different place after they learned Shara B'Tachon. And I'm not just referring in a religious manner. I'm referring to their lives were at the, what they felt was the epitome of their difficulties. Nothing was going. Nothing was moving, nothing was happening, nothing was succeeding. There was no mazal, everything was ala panim, everything they touched was mamash, no go, ng. <clears throat> and then they sat down one day and they decided that they're going to learn with a rabbi, Shara Bitachon. And I know countless people, countless people that they were extremely unsuccessful. And then one day they got this whim to decide to sit down and learn with a rabbi, Shara Bitachon. And suddenly after that, and not, and not too much, not too long after that, which is the amazing thing. It wasn't that they completed Shara Bitachon, it was that they started to learn Shara Bitachon. That already was a turning point in their lives of seeing an incredible new life, an incredible new mahalach of how to live life. And that new life brought new mazal, new success, new oxygen. And they kicked themselves for the amount of years that it took them to finally wake up, to come to such a learning of Shar Bitachon. And wow, the difference that they live from that day and on. And they felt incumbent upon them to go out and preach and tell the world, guys, don't make the mistake I made. Don't wait till half your lifetime and all different types of, God forbid, things that they had to go through to wake up and decide to take the plunge and make a kavua said there in Shara Bitachon al Yideh, someone who can teach it. Like this they felt that their sacrifice, so to speak, and what they endured until they saw the light, and still they started living like a real Yid, like a real Jew, al emunam bitachon, they could at least pass it on to others. So let's start with the intro. And I think every week we're going to start with a certain intro of the Bet HaLevi and his famous essay that he wrote on bitachon, and then we'll get to the Sefer. The Bet Halevi writes, everybody remembers in the book of Devarim, it talks about when Klal Yisrael would go to war. And the Torah tells you that the Kohen would stand up and this Kohen would start to announce, anybody that just got engaged to a girl, go home. Anyone that just built a house, go home. Anyone that just tended a vineyard and did not yet reap its, go home. Go home, go home, go home. Wow, what type of a pep, pep talk speech is that? Well, you're not going to end up with an army at the end of the day. Instead of hyping up the people, this Kohen, Hamashuach Milchama, ends up sending home more people than he ends up sending out to the battlefield. What type of job is that? What is he doing? You're supposed to go out and give the people the pep talk of the lifetime to send them out to the battlefield, to rile them up. <coughs> and instead, bidiyuk lehefech. And the secret is in the last sentence of the Kohen HaMashuach Milchama. Says the Bet HaLevi, on the last sentence, you know what he says? And anyone else that has a soft heart and has fear inside of him going out to war, go home. Oh. 
at the end, there we see the secret of what really was going on all along on the powerful speech of the Kohen, Kohen Gadol Mashuach Lemilchama. He's talking about fear. Says the Bet Halevi, fear is Bitachon's nemesis. Ad kedekach, that God forbid, a person does not have an issue, does not have a problem, but due to a certain fear that he's harboring inside of him, that fear could, God forbid, bring upon him things that initially was never even a havamina or a problem for him in the first place. But his fear brought it about. Get ready for this, says the Beta Levi. The Rambam in Sefer HaMitzvot counts going out to war with fear as one of the Shesa 365 Lotase Averot of Torah. He calls it an Avera. It's an Avera. It's an Avera to have fear. Fear or worry. Let's talk now fear. Fear. Now what do you mean? Come on, I'm going out to war. I mean, come on. You know in the olden days, the famous Sugin Maseche Kitubot, and the Bet Bet, that when they would go out to war, they'd have to give their wives a get first. Lule, God forbid, they don't end up coming home. Like this, the get ends up working retroactively. Lubafreya. So you see that there was a Hava Amina of thought of, hey, I'm going out to war. This is not a joke. This is real. And yet, the Rambam and his Sefer Mitzvot, he counts going out to war with fear as a sin. As an Avera. What's the Avera? Isn't that natural? Isn't that normal? Isn't that human? Well, you don't want to be, you, have, you want me to be a Malach? You don't want me, you don't want me to be human? You want me, you want me to be this, this, this angel? Or better yet, you want me to be a Balgaiva? They come, oh, I'm, I'm going to rip their arm. No, I'm going to, oh, you joke, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to, well, what, that's better? Confident. Right, the overconfident guy. That's what you want. So what does the Torah want? Says the Beta Levi, neither. The Torah wants bitachon b'ashem. Because we do not win wars with might. We win wars with trust. Did you get that? <laughs> we do not win wars with might. We do not win wars with might. We win wars with trust. Complete and absolute trust in Hashem. What does that mean? It means, Abba, and I want you guys to memorize what I'm about to tell you now. Abba, I am Mivatel. All my kochot, all my chokhmot, all my strategies, and all my smarts. I'm evatelit bitul gamor. You know like the way you mevatel the chametz after you do bidikat chametz the night before Passover where you say kal chamira dika birshuti. Guess what? Sometimes in life, maybe all, not just sometimes, maybe every day, you know, better yet, maybe every amida, we should say a kal chamira. Kal chamira, any ounce of gava, any ounce of feelings that it's me that's doing stuff in life and it's me that things are relying on and it's my smarts and it's my talent and it's my brilliance and it's me and my strength. Abba, let's get something straight. I'm being mevatel. Kol chamira v'chamia. Any ounce of that chametz, any ounce of that gaiva, any ounce of those feelings that I think it's me, I'm being mevatelit now, bitul gamor. I'm being mevatel myself and my confidence, bitul gamor in front of you. And instead, I'm relying on only you, 100%, to take care of me, to take care of my problems for me, and I'm going to follow you in Asev and Ishma. 
like a son that walks behind his father with humility. Because you're my father and I'm your son. And kerachem aval banim. And therefore, I have complete reliance on you and trust that you're taking care of me. You're going to take care of my problems for me. Please take care of problem X for me. Please take care of problem Y for me. Please take care of this issue for me. Please help me with the shalom by it. Please help me with my parnasa to take care of X, Y, and Z. Because I'm completely relying on you to take care of my problems. Because you love me. Because you're my father. And I'm your son. And fathers, they love their sons. Fathers bail out their sons even when they don't deserve it. So it's not about being a good boy. It's not about being a bad boy. It's about being your boy. That's the way we win wars. Oh, wait one second. You thought the parasha over there in Devarim was talking about the battlefield of what? Of uh, Amonu Moav? No. The Torah over there says the Bet Levi was talking about the battlefield of everyday life. Everyday life, we go to war. You don't even know this. Everyday life, we go to battle. It's us against the Yetzirah. It's us against our problems. It's us against the mask that masks this world in Hester Panim, not allowing us to see God's hand. And Mimela kind of tricking us to think that we have something to do with it. And if I worked harder, I'd make more money. And if I'd hustle, I'd do even better. And if I, and if I, and if I, and if... And all you're left with is the iPhone. That's all you're left with. But there's no other I. There's no, no, there's no zich. There's no I. So this is the battle of every day. And every day, you got to wake up in the morning, and you got to pray your heart out to Hashem, and you got to hear the Kohen HaMashuach LeMilchama speech in the back of your brain and says... Anyone out there that's scared, go home. Because if you want to succeed in life, you're going to have to replace the fear with trust. Tremendous. Mamela says the Bet Levi. Let's understand, before we, before we find out the depths of the Itachon and exactly what it is to do right, let's first figure out what we're doing wrong. Because the pasuk in the words of David HaMelech is, Sur merah, So Sur merah means first let's <clears throat> get rid of what we were doing wrong first. And then we'll start talking about what we were doing right. A lot of times when guys came to me asking for a little bit of coaching while dating, and they're asking me like, how do I get the girl? I said, no, 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 no. Oh, hey, let, let me explain something. <laughs> it's not about how you get the girl. It's how you don't turn off the girl first. Let's, yeah. let's first talk about being a mensch. Because you're so used to hanging with guys. You're so used to you're picking your ears and, 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 and plucking out your eyebrows. and You're so used to guys that you don't realize it's in front of a, a, a person who is new to you. And, 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 and they're sizing you up and, and, and you're turning them off and you didn't even get a word out of your mouth yet. Be a mensch. Let's talk about the sur merah and then we can talk about the asetov. And that's why I thought that this Bet HaLevi's step one in his essay would be a real nice intro to Shara Bitachon because I think that the big side of the sur merah is this concept that we talk into ourselves so much fear because we've seen other people go through difficulties and we don't want to be that person. And oh my God, what happened to them might happen to me. And that source of fear is a mirage that the Yetzirah plays on us like a movie. And instead of putting the other person who we know went through a certain problem, he literally edits that person's face out in a movie and puts ours and said, and says, you see what's going to happen to you? Do you see what's going to happen to you? Do you see what's going to, you see what, oh my God, and oh my God. And, and, and we start working ourselves up into a frenzy and we get so huff puffed. And guys, why does he do that? Because when he gets you so worked up, he gets you so gazed. And when he gets you so gazed, you're living in a world of London fog. At the end of the day, you can't even 
try to begin to think, wait one second, there's a Hashem in the world. He runs the world. He's my father. He'll never let that happen to me. He loves me. He always took care of me. He's going to invite her to take care of me. You know who pulled this trick? Wow, look at that. We could actually attach it to the parasha. I wasn't even trying to do that. But now it popped into my head. This was Paro's plan. Paro turned to the Egyptian taskmasters and said, we can't let these guys be able to even have a second. Don't even give him a second to think. Because the minute the Jew has a minute, a second to think, automatically he starts thinking about his God. Automatically he starts connecting to Hashem. Automatically he starts drawing on unbelievable strength. And we'll never break him. So Paro's first request, his first line of attack and strategy and Paro is the Yetzer Hara. That, that's, that's, that is, Paro is the Yetzer Hara. I'm going to keep him running and running and running and running. I'm going to keep him on the run in fear. Oh my gosh, this might happen and that might happen. And what happens if I lose the account? I, I, and I'm only living on one account. If I lose this account, I'm done. And what happens if this and what happens if that? And what happens if, God forbid, the schools call me up and they decide to raise my tuition this year? I'm cutting it by the month. And what happens if my wife decides that this year, uh, I don't know, she'd uh, want to do the impossible, like uh, buying a house in Brooklyn. <laughs> you know, or, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh my God, oh man. And, and I'm freaking out every day of the week. Uh, today it's the tuition, tomorrow it's my wife, next week it's my job. In two weeks from now, it's definitely going to be Amazon. It, 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 there's something. Oh, and he keeps us on the treadmill of fear. And you know who we become? We become that hamster in the, in the, wheel. In the wheel. And we're running for our lives. <clears throat> and we ain't going anywhere. Behind Nothing's behind you. <laughs> and we ain't going anywhere either. We're in the same wheel around. And around and around comes the Beta Levila says, Hey, I want to play you an audio of the famous speech of the Kohen HaMashuach Lemilchama of what he taught the Jewish people about going out to a fight, going out to a challenge, going out to war. Listen to his words. He tells the people in basic terms. After giving all the different examples, he summarizes it as, if you have fear in your heart, go home. Because we don't win wars with might. We, with, we win wars with trust. Trust in Hashem. We succeed with trust. We become wealthy with trust. We become successful with trust. Because we realize that the absolute trust and reliance is on Hashem, and it's only Him who can give you the mazel. Only Him can give you the success. Only Him that can give you the wealth. And He's waiting for you to turn up to Him and say, you know what? I'm done with this fear. I'm done with hyping myself up and totally overreacting to the shtuyot of the fog that He keeps putting in my head and putting these mirages in front of me, like, oh my God, any second the shoe is going to drop in this area in life, and in that area in life. And oh my God, maybe this is the phone call. And oh my God, maybe this is the problem. And, and we live like a skeleton, scared of our own shadow. And he's so good at doing this because he's the master, Yetzer Hara, like Paro, is the master of all illusions. So we got to break out of this vicious cycle, says the Beta Levi. And we got to realize that fear is an Avera. The Rambam counts it, the Sefer HaMitzvot. And we got to realize that we're mevatel ourselves legamre Hashem. And the minute we come up with this idea that we can't do anything without Hashem, and He is our everything, and we're leaning and trusting on him like a little baby that's trusting and leaning and relying on its mother and father. At that moment, Hashem says, oh, you opened the door for me to come in. Now I'm going to take care of you in ways that you could never have done for yourself. I'm going to take care of your problems. I'm going to take care of your mazal. I'm going to take care of things that you don't even know is a problem, and I'll make sure you'll not even find out about it. 
I'll take care of everything behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. And at that moment, we begin to live a completely different life. A life that has much less worry. A life that has much less fear. A life of a healthy... And by the way, if you would know how much the fear affects our health. Wow, it's like not normal. You have to see that the studies they made about the people that live with and without the stress, with and without the fear. Wow, wow, wow. The heart issues. and the, the, I, don't to, I don't have to tell you guys how much healthier of a life, happier of a life, vibrant of a life. Therefore, says the Beta Levi, remember the Sur Mera. <clears throat> Talk to fear in the face and tell him, I'm not scared of you. You don't know who my father is. Oh, let me... You think your dad... Huh? You think your dad's big? My dad's... My daddy's bigger than your daddy. And nobody can come back and say anything to you when you tell them who who your daddy is. And that does so much for our confidence and reliance... And don't let that Yitzhara tell you, yeah, but, you know, daddy only loves you when you're good. No, it's not true. This week's parasha, you ready for this? Eheye, asher eheye. Moshe Rabbeinu asks Hashem, what's your name? Eheye, asher eheye. Says the Baalei Musar, eheye, I'm with you, even after you sin. Eheye, I'm with you, even after your chote. Asher eheye, and even if you go back and sin again, eheye, I'm still with you again. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, wait, but Borei Olam, I, I, I don't know if I should tell that to the people because now the people, you know, the first time they sin and then they feel bad, they see you with them. They say, wow, look at that. My dad, he didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't leave me. He didn't forsake me. He's still with me. And he helped me. And he put me back on my feet. And he took care of me. <coughs> and he bailed me out. So maybe, says Moshe Rabbeinu, the next time he's tested, he won't be holding back that much to sin because he's going to say to himself, Eheta ve'ashuva. I'll sin and then I'll do tshuva. And you're not allowed to say that. Hashem says, okay, you're right. Okay, don't tell them. But Moshe, between me and you, even when they do sin the second time, <laughs> I'm still with them. <laughs> because my name is Eheye Asher Eheye. So what does Moshe Rabbeinu do? He goes into Klal Israel, he goes into Egypt, and he says, Eheye Shalachani. Just once. He's trying to give them the intonation like, even after you sin, Hashem is with you but don't push it because I don't want you sinning thinking that you're going to be relying on that God will always be there to bail you out no matter what. And meanwhile, Hashem is still whispering into Moshe's ear, but between me and you, Moshe, I just want you to know, (laughs) off record, I'm still with them, even if they sin the second time and the third time and the 15th time. And as, as long as they want to come back to me, I'll be there with them and I'll bail them out. I'll save them because I love them no matter what they do. And I'll always be their father. And I'll always be there for them. And I'll always take care of them. I just want them to trust in me. Because if they put their trust in other things, then I have no choice but to allow those other things to take care of them. But if they put their trust in me, I'll be the one to take care of them. And I'll take care of them in ways that nothing else in the world can. So let's get away from the sur mera. Let's look fear in the face and tell them, you don't know who my daddy is. And let's go to the Asetov and trust and trust and trust and talk to Abba. Talk to him. 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 Tell him. Tell him the stuff in your life. Tell him what's going on. Tell him the stuff that's weighing you down. And tell him, Abba, I'm a vatl myself, Lagamri. I can't do, I can't, my little hands can't do much, but your big hands can do everything. So I'm going to rely on you and I'm going to trust in you that you're going to take care of me and my problems. Please. I'm thanking you in advance for the problem that I have, X, Y, and Z, that you're going to take care of. And thank you also, by the way, for this problem that I have that you're going to take care of for me. And thank you also, by the way, for these issues that I'm dealing with. And by the way, I can use a help in the Parnassan department. Thank you, Abba, for the Shefa Mufleget that you're going to send me as well because your hands are so big, you don't know how to give little. My hands are little. 
So how much can my hands do? But your hands are so big, they don't know how to give little. So your hands are big, so they always give big. So my little hands will take as that big that you're going to give. I'm standing here and receiving, and I'm waiting for you to give. I'm not going to take because it'll be futile. My tiny hands, what can I take? Your big hands, they're so big. I'm waiting for you to give, and I'm trusting that you will give. And boy, will you give. You'll give more than I could ever take. So thank you for giving me in advance. Ah! So we finish off the share and we say the following. Let's learn the first few words of Shara B'Tachon. Amamr Chaber. B'pnei Shekadam Ma'amarenu B'chiyuv Kabbalat Avodat Elokim. Says the Chaber. We explained in the earlier Sha'arim of the works. Kabbalat Avodat Elokim. A person has an obligation to take upon himself Avodat Hashem. He has to give himself over to Avodat Hashem. That shouldn't be a burden. But you should understand that that Avodat Hashem that you're giving yourself over to is everything. That's your life. Everything else is secondary because it's only going to be a result to how much you gave over to that Avodat HaKodesh. Therefore, he says the Shar Bitachon, says the Chobat Levavot, says Rabbeinu Bachya, according to those who feel that he was the one who wrote. He says, I've seen it very important to present to a person what's the most needed for a person to be the servant of Hashem. What is the most needed idea to be called Eved Hashem? And that, the most important ingredient to be considered a true Eved Hashem, to have true connection to Hashem, relationship to Hashem, and that is the trust that we put into Hashem in all our affairs. Hashem should give us the opportunity to see what it means to be a loving father and how much He loves us. And the more we feel that love, the more we rely. And then the more we rely, the more we feel that love. And then the more we feel that love, the more we rely. It's a magnificent <laughs> cycle. It's a magnificent cycle. We should be zochet that that cycle should start right now. Baruch Adonai le'olam. Amen. So let me ask you a question. So, of course.